Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. And today I wanted to dedicate an episode on the law of assumption, as discussed by Neville Goddard in his radio lecture in July of 1951. And the reason this is important is I want to discuss the law of assumption as compared to the law of attraction and why this particular law is so powerful when we start to see the development of new spiritual and mystical sciences such as reality transurfing and and physics to discussing parallel realities. This particular technique and law is at the very crux of the idea of moving into states that Neville Goddard talks about. And I wanted to see if he had discussed it in particular. And this is a pretty good lecture. I think you're going to enjoy it. He states the great mystic William Blake wrote almost 200 years ago, what seems to be is to those to whom it seems to be and is productive of the most dreadful consequences to those to whom it seems to be. Now at first this mystical gem seems a bit involved, or at best to be a play on words, but is nothing of the kind. Listen to it carefully. What seems to be is to those to whom it seems to be. That is certainly clear enough. It is a simple truth about the law of assumption and a warning of the consequence of its misuse. The author of the Epistle to the Romans declared in the 14th chapter, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean. To him it is unclean. We see by this that it is not superior insight but per blindness that reads into the greatness of men some littleness with which it chances to be familiar for what seems to be is to those to whom it seems to be. Experiments recently conducted at two of our leading universities revealed this great truth about the law of assumption. They stated in their releases to the newspapers that after 2,000 experiments they came to the conclusion that what you see when you look at something depends not so much on what is there as on the assumption you make when you look. What you believe to be the real physical world is actually only an assumptive world. In other words, you would not define your husband in the same way that your mother would, yet you are both defining the same person. Your particular relationship to a thing influences your feelings with respect to that thing and makes you see it in an element which is not there. If your feeling in the matter is a self-element, it can be cast out. If it is a permanent distinction in the state considered, it cannot be cast out. The thing to do is to try. If you can change your opinion of another, then what you now believe of him cannot be absolutely true, but relatively true. Men believe in the reality of the external world because they do not know how to focus and condense their powers to penetrate its thin crust. Strangely enough, it is not difficult to penetrate this view of the senses, to remove the veil of the senses. We do not employ great effort. The objective world vanishes as we turn our attention from it. We have only to concentrate on the state desired to mentally see it but to give reality to it so that it will become an objective fact. We must focus our attention upon the desired state until it has all the sensory vividness and feeling of reality. When through concentrated attention, our desire appears to possess the distinctness and feeling of reality. When the form of thought is as vivid as the form of nature, we've given it the right to become a visible fact in our lives. Each man must find the means best suited to his nature to control his attention and concentrate it on the desired state. I find for myself the best state to be one of meditation, a relaxed state akin to sleep, but a state in which I am still consciously in control of my imagination and capable of fixing my attention on a mental object. It is difficult to control the direction of your attention while in this state akin to sleep you may find gazing fixedly into an object very helpful. 
do not look at its surface, but rather into and beyond any plain object such as a wall, a carpet, or any object which possesses depth. Arrange it to return as little reflection as possible. Imagine that in this depth, you are seeing and hearing what you want to see and hear until your attention is exclusively occupied by the imagined state. At the end of your meditation, when you are awake from your controlled waking dream, you feel as though you had returned from a great distance. The visible world which you had shut out returns to consciousness and by its very present informs you that you have been self-deceived into believing that the object of your contemplation was real. But if you remain faithful to your vision, this sustained mental attitude will give reality to your visions, and they will become visible, concrete facts in your world. Define your highest ideal and concentrate your attention upon this ideal until you identify yourself with it. Assume the feeling of being it, the feeling that would be yours were you now embodying it in your world. This assumption, though now denied by your senses, if persisted in, will become a fact in your world. You will know when you have succeeded in fixing the desired state in consciousness simply by looking mentally at the people you know. This is a wonderful check on yourself as your mental conversations are more revealing than your physical conversations are. If in your mental conversations with others you talk with them as you formerly did, then you have not changed your concept of self. For all changes of concepts of self result in a changed relationship to the world. Remember what was said earlier. What you see when you look at something depends not so much on what is there as on the assumption you make when you look. Therefore, the assumption of the wish fulfilled should make you see the world mentally as you would physically or your assumption of physical fact. The spiritual man speaks to the natural man through the language of desire. The key to progress in life and to the fulfillment of dreams lies in the ready obedience to the voice. Unhesitating obedience to its voice is an immediate assumption of the wish fulfilled. To desire a state is to have it. As Pascal said, you would not have sought me had you not already found me. Man, by assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled and then living and acting on this conviction, changes his future in harmony with his assumption. To change his future is the inalienable right of freedom-loving individuals. There would be no progress in the world were it not for the divine discontent in man which urges him on to higher and higher levels of consciousness. Since the right to change our future is our birthright as sons of God, let us accept its challenge and learn just how to do it. Again today, speaking of changing your future, I wish to stress the importance of a real transformation of self, not merely a slight alteration of circumstances, which in a matter of moments will permit us to slip back into the old dissatisfied man. In your meditation, Allow others to see you as they would see you, were this new concept of a self a concrete fact. You always seem to others the embodiment of the ideal you inspire. Therefore, in meditation, when you can contemplate others, you must be seen by them mentally as you would be seen by them physically. Were your conception of yourself an objective fact? That is, in meditation, you imagine that they see you expressing this nobler man you desire to be. 
If you assume that you are what you want to be, your desire is fulfilled. And in fulfillment, all longing to be is neutralized. This also is an excellent check on yourself as to whether or not you've actually succeeded in changing self. You cannot continue desiring what has been realized. Rather, you are in a mood to give thanks for a gift received. Your desire is not something you labor to fulfill. It is recognizing something you already possess. It is assuming the feeling of being that which you desire to be. Believing and being are one. The conceiver and his conception are one. Therefore, that which you conceive yourself to be can never be so far off as even to be near, for nearness implies separation. If thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. If you assume that you are that finer, nobler one you wish to be, you will see others as they are related to your high assumption. All enlightened men wish for the good of others. If it is the good of another you seek, you must use the same controlled contemplation. In meditation, you must represent the other to yourself as already being or having the greatness you desire for him. As for yourself, your desire for another must be an intense one. It is through desire that you rise above your present sphere and the road from longing to fulfillment is shortened as you experience in imagination all that you would experience in the flesh were you or your friend the embodiment of the desire you have for yourself for him experience has taught me that this is the perfect way to achieve my great goals for others as well as for myself however my own failures would convict me were I to imply that I have completely mastered the control of my attention I can however with the ancient teachers say the one thing I could do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press towards the mark for the prize. A short but sweet lecture on a beautiful day. And understand when we talk about the law of attraction, we're talking about things being attracted to us, events, people, things being attracted to us. Assumption is different. By assuming, not thinking the thought, but by assuming the state of the wish fulfilled. You enter into, a, I think that it's kind of a more advanced way to understand the law of attraction. They are similar. I'm not saying Neville Goddard is not talking about the law of attraction, but when he talks about the law, he's talking about the law of assumption. This is back in 1951. Maybe it was, you know, that, that at the time, maybe law of attraction wasn't really being talked about, but there is a difference. And the difference is that the, the assumption is the power. And so it's difficult. But there's such pure faith involved in assumption because you can't assume something that you don't have faith in or don't believe in. So it's all tied together. But when you feel in that moment as if it's happening now, there's something that happens. I almost kind of imagine it like you're sitting in a river stream and the water's going by you. And by touching the water, the environment around you can change, but only while you're in the water. So when you're in the water, then you can start to change it. You can't think about what's happening down the stream or before you on the stream. You're in the stream now and you have an effect on how you move in the water. Okay? So perhaps that we, we are going along and there's like 20 different ways the river can go. And we're steering ourselves on this river in the moment by setting a, a physical compass towards the thing that we want and so it's like we're rowing along and then we if we feel oh i, I want to have this particular experience or feeling 
I want to have this freedom. I want to travel to Australia, whatever it is. And then you start to feel what that would feel like. And you get really good at it. You get really good at differentiating your feelings and creating feelings for something that has not yet existed. And when you do that, then it's like the, the boat that you're on is going to move towards the direction of where you want to go. It's like the wind becomes a push behind you. And that is how you sense it. So for some people, it's difficult to go into that feeling. But don't look at it as you may be looking at. Maybe it's the way that you're perceiving what you're doing in that process. What you're trying to do is set your compass. Change the way that you row. And let the winds push you in the direction of that feeling. And how are you going to find that? The heart can sense by feeling. So the heart is connected to your mind. You have an idea in your mind what you want. But the idea is going to just go nowhere. But the heart, this all-powerful thing that's connected to outer intention, that's connected to all around us, the environment around us, can feel. And it can sense feelings and energies. And so when we, in our moment, assume what we want, we come into the assumption of the feeling, then we can do incredible things. We can move on that river and the wind will blow us in the direction of what we want. How do we create a feeling for something? Well, he's giving us some clues in this teaching. You can create the feeling by imagining what other people would say to you. So create a situation where you have the feeling and then somebody says, hey, great job. or Good job, man. That's, that's fantastic news. Isn't that wonderful? Something like that. And they're going to be talking to you. And so you can even imagine for someone else and how you would, what you would say to them had their wish been fulfilled. And then it's going to pull the reality towards that direction. We are so much more powerful than we realize. We have not awoken to what we can really do because we live in such a limited understanding of our universe. We're enabled to step back and look at the flow of our reality in relation to our thoughts. And if we had some way of monitoring our thought streams that come in and so that we could see how our thoughts are actually affecting our reality and how realities in the future and past solidify we have this entire space around us in the inner spaces all around us and it's a thinking substance if you get a chance i just narrated an audiobook and it totally neville goddard all the way it's the science of getting rich And it's another way to understand it is that imagine all the matter around us, the substance around us is an intelligent substance that is a thought. It is a thought. You're looking at thoughts all around you and you can affect that matter, the matter inside it, the inner spaces all around it by our thought. And so we can, but it's difficult because we have fleeting thoughts that happen. But if you solidify your thought through attention and through purpose, and you magnify your thought through feeling, then then your environment can change. And this was being written about back in 1910. It's been, been written about in the Kabbalion. It's been written about in the Bible. The greatest teacher of this concept is Jesus. That's what Neville Goddard's talking about. All of the examples that he gives, we've been told all this time, and it's like all these other forces don't want us to see the true teaching that we have in the Bible, that we can assume different states and our environment will change around us. That's what happens to the people in the Bible, and the Bible examines these different states which are eternal, but it's beyond that. We, the, the states are not just in the Bible. There are infinite numbers of states that are related to us, and these states tune us in to a quantum field that carries multiple variations in our realities a space of variations in quantum physics it's a quantum field that makes up all the possible variations for matter and how it will solidify as we move through reality imagine reality is very much like water water can also freeze it can become gas and at certain times when water moves through the pipe and freezes That's still the same thing, but that's what we're existing right now is where the water is kind of frozen. And we're dealing with the elements of that, okay? And so there's multiple different ways and pathways that we can move on. So to make it simple, to make it easy to understand, to take away the complexity of it, it's so much easier to go to the teachings of Neville Goddard. You can make it and you can make it as complicated as you want, which in many ways can help you. 
by looking at systems like reality transurfing and you can continue to learn about the energy centers in your bodies and you can con- and, and learn about energies around you and explore all the supernatural elements of the universe but it all comes down to one thing whatever spiritual journey that you're doing and that is you have control over anything that you want because you are living in this body as a version of God and you have the power of God when you imagine and that you are all powerful whatever you assume through the law of assumption becomes reality your assumption is the key and assuming a state of what you want will bring you into a reality of what you imagine it takes a little bit of time and it links up to everything that I've been talking about on the podcast. Go and look at the dual mirror episode on reality transurfing or the mirror principles. Whatever we think about is reflected back to us. So we are given this wonderful ability. And so when we enter a state, the state is reflected back to us. That's how the mirror works. The mirror is working as a reflecting back of states that we enter into so by assuming certain states we can control the mirror reflection you have this ability every second you're dealing with probability fields of other people that are doing the same thing but in your layer of reality you create the tones and colors for it and you choose willingly whatever you want and if you embrace right now how quickly things can change for you how easily you can change your your reality then you can stop looking at the all the things around you which create your reflection in a feedback loop and you can forget about that because you're assuming another identity and you can let that identity go and let it die as you can see from my episode on the art of dying and you can move into this new state and you can play around with the way your mind remembers and believes in things by using the memory nodes of your brain by assuming that it's a memory in the first place the i remember one episode gives you a way to control your belief system in the mirror these techniques and tricks that neville goddard used are very powerful in the way that our brain works and in a way that it creates reality you have a simple gift and it's easy to do you can do it during meditation you can do it as you go to sleep when i interviewed 2020 recently and his technique is he in the morning when he wakes up he imagines the things that he wants for himself and others and he also takes a nap during the day and it does the same process of imagining something a nap can be just as effective i find meditation is better i like to be conscious during the process but at least if we're integrating with our subconscious mind then we start to affect what our consciousness is reflecting in the mirror as well but you can do this through the law of assumption. You can do this on a day-by-day basis. It's interesting because Neville Goddard didn't didn't propose doing affirmations. I still am a big believer in that because it helps me to to move me into certain states. But he he it wasn't important to him. And he didn't believe in looking at astrology because he believed we were all powerful over that. He drank regularly. He wasn't what you would imagine somebody with this uh, with this perspective. But the words of what he's saying are powerful and I just invite you to try it yourself. Check out one of my meditations. I have a couple meditations. The Ascending to Higher Dimensions uses this Neville Goddard technique at the beginning so you can enter into the state of the wish fulfilled also check out i have a neville goddard sleep meditation it's about 23 minutes and it allows you to do that to go into the state of the wish fulfilled another thing as we're moving into these assumptive states to in order to continue and we don't get veered off course on a daily basis the idea of revision the revising as you go along if your day didn't go along as you want it just go back and revise it even during the day or as a moment happens and if you continue to do that it's like you're on the boat in the water and it keeps you going down the stream that you wanted and that's all we're trying to do is get going on the right stream in the direction of the thing that you 
desire of your wish fulfilled? Isn't that what we all want? I, that's what I desire for you. And I imagine right now that everything is propelling for you, speeding up for you right now as you hear the words of my voice that reality is speeding up whatever your truest and best desires are coming to you easily and quickly and increasing quantities and from multiple sources on a continuous basis. Things are getting better for you every second. Everything is working to your advantage. There's purpose behind everything. I want you to believe that all you have to do is simply assume, assume, and find a way to use the law of assumption. Assume the the wish is fulfilled, get the feeling of it, enter a meditative state of this, play around with different meditations or find a way for it to do for yourself. And you can have whatever you want, whatever your situation is now, just forget about the outside environment. It's a thinking substance that you still have control over. And if you have time, because the reflection of the mirror is slow, when you lift your hand, you won't see the reflection change right away. You're not going to see everything change immediately, but it can move faster when you do this on a regular basis because you're going to start moving down the right stream towards the reality that you want. Thank you so much for this wonderful journey again. Check out future episodes. I have lots more lectures that I will be going through. They're all wonderful. and It's always wonderful to get a chance to share in these wonderful metaphysical teachings and welcome to the Reality Revolution.